Afternoon ladies and gents and you're going to be joining me on one of our little on foot tours Let's catch this little bit of history Pause or screenshot to read Each one of those images is matched up with the number there if you care to do so this area at the moment doesn't look that pretty because it's under redevelopment but interestingly enough here I'll see you through there that's better those two blocks of stone there are um, pieces of old London Bridge and our walk today is going to take us from Barking St Margaret's which was once a great abbey as you just read if you did read that this is the redevelopment polishing and historic gem we are carrying out vital works to make the curfew tower a more attractive place to visit it did look a bit of a shithole beforehand and I must admit they've made it look nice so how long it lasts for time can only tell and that was the king the, the king's ball pub there which uh, Kind of closed down there. Let's wait for this car to go by. All that remains of the Great Abbey, building wise, still standing, is the curfew tower here, which we're going to see in a sec, and the Church of St. Margaret's itself, which was the nun's private chapel in the days of the Great Abbey. But this is the curfew tower. They've got Death Watch Beetle in the floors, unfortunately, at the moment, so I'm not going to be able to get in there for a while. They've done all the repairs on the bell tower, which you'll see soon. I'm just pointing you up because there's some kids around, and you know, I don't like from people without their consent. Yeah, they've got Death Watch Beetle in the floors in there, apparently, so unfortunately, I'm not getting in there, but it's a tiny little door. But um, as soon as the repairs are all done and sorted, I can then have access. I'm pretty well known here as well, so get on well with most of the people here. I won't take any pictures of this tour, or on this tour. I've got a lot of pictures on my phone which need to be dealt with. But yeah, our tour is going to take us from here, Barking St Margaret's, and the ruins of the old abbey, which is just over there to the grave of a very historic figure, Elizabeth Fry, who well, most of us will, of a certain age will remember best well from the five pound notes. She used to be on the backs of the five pound notes, did Elizabeth Fry, and that's where we're going to be walking from here to there. She had links to this church, and there's a little figurine of her inside, which if anyone watches my documentary on Elizabeth Fry or has watched it, Depending on what order it goes on, or what not, you'll see that. But here is the grave of Anne Young. Sorry, Jane Young. I always get that wrong. Sorry, the grave of Jane Young. And she died, this departed this life, the 20th day of January 1689, aged 16 years and three months. There's a little bit of a local legend. If anyone's been on my page for a while, you may have seen me mention it before. But this stone is known as the legend of Jane Young and the writing that will not go. Because these stones are much newer compared to this. This is 1600s. These are 1700s and 1800s. Now, any inscription on those is completely worn away. And on this one is completely worn away, which you think being there would be better protected. But Jane Young's writing has not gone. And the legend goes that her parents were so grief-stricken at her death that her father ordered the, uh, ordered the stonemason to carve the inscription so deep that it would never wear away. And there we are, it's a little piece of history. The legend of Jane Young and the writing that will not go. This is the main entrance for Sundays and high days and holidays. I won't bother getting up to it because the grid just won't allow it. It screws up the uh, filming. But on there is a, a list of the Vicars of St. Margaret's. I will try, but you can never get it right because of the grid. See what I mean? Oh, that's not too bad. It's got to get it right. 
that's possible. There we are. Martinus, the priest, Reverend Martin, 1315, is the first recorded vicar of, Ma of St. Margaret's. And inside, near the high altar, is a great big piece of, uh, like a slab of stone, with an inscription on it, which is Reverend Martinus, and a depiction of himself, with his tonsia shaved as they would have done in those days and this is the main entrance for high days and holidays and anyone that watched me here recently would see that a lot of work was being done here there was all scaffolding and it looked pretty ugly but the end result is very much worth it all up there all that wooden slatting which you can't see that great from here has been replaced the windows have been re-leaded and replaced because there was damp and water getting in there we are, that's better. So yeah, they've done a lot of work and a lot of work on the uh, the roof as well. So nice to see the old place being cared for. A lot of people donated towards that one and they got a lottery grant as well, which helped a lot. That's what stumped up the vast majority of the cash for this one. Not sure exactly how long this little video will be. Hopefully we shall arrive at our destination in one piece because barking is not the uh, it's nicely most savoury of areas, should we say? <laughs> not the most savoury of people, though. So there we are. We're well matched. I have a good smoker's cough, and I find anyone that comes too near to you just just cough profusely and. In the days of COVID, it generally nine times out of ten does the trick. And like, oh shit, COVID! It's not COVID. I'm just a heavy smoker. Right, we are now going to be going into the ruins of Barking Abbey, which is all that remains of the great abbey that once was, and it was one of the richest and greatest abbeys in England. And the eighth maiden apse and uh, Cromwell, Thomas Cromwell made an absolute killing in this one when they stripped it bare of everything and even the stones were sold it became a stone quarry you get into the churchyard through that way and over there Graham uh, one of my page members and he's become quite a good online friend actually absolutely fascinating man he's led a, a very interesting life and he's got some cracking memories which I'm glad to hear he's writing down yeah, he shared a post, uh, picture recently and relatives of his and their uh, wedding picture was there by those stairs. And I was going to say many a wedding picture's been taken there before. This bit here was a chantry for the dead, where they would obviously say prayers for the dead. And I've never, ever liked that bit. I absolutely hate that bit. Even uh, before, because um, on the off, right on the opposite side of that wall, uh, and you remember the barking bodies that's the two homosexual men that that evil beggar killed and dumped their bodies there right that's where they would were, were dumped right on literally on the opposite side of that wall even before that I didn't like it but this is a, an oratory this was this round area here and it would have been like a round tower like you see on a castle a round tower but it didn't have the crenellations it had a turret roof bit fairy tale looking if you look at the original model and it was a very very big abbey up there are the graves of St Ethelberger, St Hildelith and a sister or relative of a king just here is the nun's burial ground archaeological excavations were done there and some of the uh, artifacts that they did find are in Valence House Museum which I'll be visiting at some point in the future not quite sure when yeah, this is very nice here in the summer. And the bit I don't like, even the funny thing is, even before those poor, what happened to them poor fellows, people never generally tend to sit there much. They sit in the round little oratory bit that I've just been to, but that area has just got a really unpleasant feeling. 
I don't know whether it was prayers for the dead. I mean, would may have been said in grief, so it could have created a bit of a nasty feeling. I don't know. But yeah. And I used to do a bit of paranormal um, stuff. I've still got the equipment. And I did a bit here. And literally right on the opposite side of that wall where I don't like, I got, and my nephew heard this one, I got a, a voice, and there was no one there but me. And it said, he raped Lucy. And uh, I've managed to whittle it down to three possible candidates of Lucy's that were either raped or raped and murdered. But you can't prove exactly which one is which. And with the paranormal, there's a lot of hearsay and such. And some people don't believe it at all. But funny thing is, when I did that, I don't know whether I offended because I did it in here as well. And by the graves of the saints, whether I offended anyone or not, I have no idea. But... For a little while, quite a while after doing that, I had the most terrible spate of bad luck, you know. So, kind of put me off of doing it. I've still got all the equipment indoors. Um, SB7 spirit box, EM pump, voice recorder, all that kind of stuff. It was interesting. It was good. Bit, bit nerve-wracking at times. And uh, <laughs> I'm more into the historical side of it now. I think I'll, I'll let the dead alone. If I capture anything by accident, which I, I think I did the other day, I'll share the picture soon. Someone pointed it out to me. When I was last in the St. Bartholomew's area, um, the rookery. It's an on-foot tour you'll be seeing, or have seen maybe, the rookery. Um, down that little alleyway there, I took a picture, or several pictures, and... You know the outlet for people's boilers? They let smoke out, don't they? And I, I didn't realise it was letting smoke out, so I just took a picture of this m moody mistfield alleyway. And it wasn't until a friend of mine online pointed it out to me, went, have you seen the mist near the lamp? I went, no. He went, scroll in and have a look. He went, all I'm saying is King Charles I. And I had a look, and the crazy thing is, there's two heads there. One of them does, has got that King Charles I kind of beard, probably not even King Charles I, but a lot of the people like that in that era copied the King's fashion, shall we say. And my mate went, shit, he went, that's really crazy. He went, didn't you even notice that? I went, no. no I certainly didn't notice anything when I was there, but that alleyway is notoriously haunted, so I'm not surprised. So yeah, this is where we've come from, just over that way. And we've crossed Barking Abbey Green, which is what it is. And we're going over this way now towards here, which is not the safest of areas. So, hopefully, we shall have the blessing of the saints and Jane Young and whoever else with us. go through this little alleyway I do these on foot tours because some people might like to do these things themselves or themselves you can copy my journey you go through here which takes you out onto I'm not sure if it's open or not the gate should take me out through this way oh yeah it does. I'll have to point you this way a minute because there's people, people in the basketball court. Yeah. I can't think of the name of the road, but we will see it when we see a road sign. Sorry about having to point you down for a minute. There we go. Pollison House. But we're going around this way. We go around that way there. Yeah. And that will take you to the grave of Elizabeth Fry and the old Quaker burying ground. God, it's cold, it makes my eyes stream, you know. Whiting Avenue. Or Whiting. Whiting, I should think. Oh. 
be about a 25 minute one, maybe, hopefully under half an hour. And the uh, part of the Quaker Burying Ground will become the last bit of my documentary on Elizabeth Fry. I've got two upcoming documentaries. One on Elizabeth I, which will be the first one that you see. And then the other one on Elizabeth Fry. Which, because uh, they take a fair bit of putting together because you do the research. Um, and I, like, I kind of like to have an opening tune or an ending tune in some of my documentaries and I've been copyrighted so many times. So I did my own. Just some uh, piano music in the church of St Margaret's Barking so they let me play the baby grand piano there. So I wanted something of a Tudory kind of theme of my own making which is what I've done. And another one for the Elizabeth Fry documentary, possibly. Plus play a few tunes for my own enjoyment. Mayland's Mansions. That's the way we've come from, right? Just over there, through there, around here. And you, this takes you right round in a kind of horseshoe. But we'll be seeing the old Quaker burying ground. And the gravestone, which is a, a much more newer recent one than the original does mark the exact original grave of Elizabeth Fry and her husband. So, and not everyone knows about this. I mean, I've, I've of course, grown up 80s, 90s, 2000s, I'd seen Elizabeth Fry on the five pound notes so many times and heard a little bit about Elizabeth Fry. I had no idea that she had links to, was such strong links to Barking, both to the the Quaker Friends Meeting House, which for me is interesting as well because my own ancestors were Quakers and they were a mixed family of Church of England and Quakers. So some of them are buried in the Quaker Friends burial ground and some of them are buried in St Margaret's. Um, it wasn't really, I think until about the 1860s, 50s, 60s, that Quakers were actually allowed gravestones on their graves. At first they weren't allowed because... Quakers don't like rank, like the richest, the poorest and that kind of thing. Everyone is viewed as equal. So, and they knew that poor people wouldn't be able to afford gravestones, whereas wealthier people would be able to afford something more elaborate. And when they did eventually give in and allow it, the rules were that the gravestone had to be very plain, simple, modest and not high. Like a lot of the Georgian and Victorian gravestones, some of them are six foot tall in height. And uh, the Quakers were allowed gravestones, but they had to be very modest. And the little onion top dome that you can see there is the Barking Gurdwara Temple, which is a, a very, very pretty building. Architecturally speaking, it's, it's a lovely building to look at. A lot of people moan about it and say it's out of place and whatnot and that. But it's here and it adds interest to the area. And they do a lot of good work apparently with the homeless and such like. So that can only be a good thing. It's very hard um, to get in there to take pictures or photos not being of that denomination. Carol who's from... Bark in St Margaret's, she's church, one of the church wardens there. She's asked several times and never got a reply. Uh, she said, I don't like to go and uh, go around there and, and go in and ask. I may do one day. We shall see. And we are coming up to here, the Barking Quaker Burial Ground and the grave of Elizabeth Fry. There's an information board in there, so we'll see that too. And we should be around 30 minutes. But yeah, the Quaker Friends Meeting House, the old one was over there. This one here is what they built in its place. And then when the Quakers went from here to Wanstead, that became the main Friends Meeting House at Wanstead, and this one became the original Barking Gurdwara Temple here. There we are. In we go. And there's a history board as well, so 
that we shall have a look at. But this wall here and this gate and that arch there particularly is original to the time of Elizabeth Fry. And I accidentally several times called the poor lady Elizabeth Stride, which bearing in mind that Elizabeth Stride was a prostitute and Elizabeth Fry was a Quaker, I shouldn't imagine she would have liked very much, but it was a genuine accident. The Quaker burying ground, who are the Quakers? I will take pictures of this. That's the old, the original friends meeting house. So my Maywood ancestors would have worshipped there along with the Fries. That's the fascinating thing for me that Samuel Maywood and Junior, Senior and Senior again, they would have known the Fries from the friends meeting house. And being that Quakers were very much on equal terms with people, whether they were rich or poor, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It absolutely, well, it just fascinates me. Just trying to get a picture of that to get it clear, but this information board's a bit wrecked. But look, buried in this place, Quakers disapproved, this is what I was saying, Quakers disapproved of headstones in their burial grounds as they made a distinction between the rich who could afford a memorial and the poor who could not. Only in 1850, ah, see it's a bit earlier, I thought it was 1860s, only in 1850 did they officially allow headstones to be erected as long as they, there was no distinction in size between the stones. And here you've got Joseph Fry, died 1861, age 84, and Elizabeth, wife of the above, Joseph Fry. She died in 1845, age 65. That is her original gravestone. Um, the gravestone commemorating Elizabeth Fry and husband Joseph in 1972. When the burial ground was transferred to the council, this gravestone was moved to the Friends Burial Ground at Wanstead. So we'll try and, and uh, get in touch with them and see. Because uh, uh, Carol thinks that some of my ancestors may have had stones and they may have been moved there as well because the Maywoods, one part of the Maywood family wasn't rich but they had a business and Samuel Maywood, who I went for many years thinking was my four or five times great-grandfather wasn't, he's the brother of my four or five times great-grandfather but Samuel Maywood was quite well off, he lived in Plasto Village when it was a village and owned a plumbing business but my little branch of the family, they were eel fishermen in Barking uh, the headstone commemorating William Mead and his wife, Sarah, the stepdaughter of George Fox, founder of the Quakers. Headstone was probably one of the earliest Quaker headstones to survive, to survive into modern times. So, get back and try and get, yeah, that will do. So yeah, we'll try and get the friend's burial ground and see what we can see if anything yeah you've got an interesting bit of the history can't remember whether I photographed that or not so I will do it again that's the original friends meeting house takes place original meeting house a watercolour painting by Alfred Bennett Bamford and then the house was rebuilt in 1908 which is that one that we saw just now it's now the Barking Gurdwara Temple, as I said, or was, and then they built the new Barking Gurdwara Temple. Anyway, onto the the only grave in this place marked with a stone, because being such a prominent figure, national figure in so many regards, they couldn't. Elizabeth Fry could not be marked with left without a stone. The, the only thing I dislike about this is her husband isn't mentioned on it, which I don't think's right. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, looking at the grave, a more modern one. The old one, as you read there, was moved, and this one was put in its place. But this marks the exact grave of, the exact site of the grave of Elizabeth Fry, born in 1780, died in 1845. Let's remove my hat, beg your pardon. Quaker and philanthropist and prison reformer. And that's like, a lot of what she was famous for, Elizabeth Fry. And if I come here, that's it you can see that holographic kind of image much better. And that's where we recognize her from the five pound notes, which will be a little tag on to the end of this. Born at Norwich to a Quaker 
banking family, Elizabeth Fry campaigned to improve conditions for women in London's notorious Newgate prison. She travelled extensively, promoting penal reform, and went on to become Europe's principal campaigner for inmates' rights. She died at Ramsgate at age 65 and was buried here at the Society of Friends Burial Ground in Barking. Elizabeth Fry's important contribution to prison reform was commemorated in 2002 when the Bank of England selected her to feature on a new £5 note. Oh, so that's, I thought it was earlier than that that she went on to the £5 note. So, yeah, she was on the £5 notes from 2002 until when they took her off and replaced her with, I think, some, one of the Bronte sisters now. I could be wrong. I'll have to check. No, it's Winston Churchill on the £5 notes now. Bronte's uh, £10. So, yeah, there we have the grave of Elizabeth Fry. Let's get her picture again. May she rest in peace. And Joseph Fry as well, her husband. I don't think it's right that they should not be mentioned together. They were husband and wife. But yeah, there we are. Might get one of those little cheap plaques, you know, the... The ones like what cremation things have, just of his name on it. Because I don't like the idea of them not being mentioned together. I know they're not family of mine, but... And a lot of people were buried in this, this burial ground in the old days. A family grave was that. You would buy a plot of land in the churchyard. And they would dig the first one in extremely deep down. Sometimes 25 or 30 foot down. Same as with a parish grave. When parish graves went in, that was the parish poor people that couldn't afford a private grave. So they'd dig a very, very deep hole. The first one went in, funeral. Second one went in, funeral. And even with private family graves, although it was done with more uh, wealth and money spent and such like, the, they were deep and they could get quite a lot because when you look at an old Victorian grave or a Georgian grave and you think wow are all those people that are mentioned on that stone actually buried in there yes they are and when that one became full they would bury next to it on either side it was weren't so much regulations in those days and that is the Barking Gudwara Temple which I shall take a picture of get out this lamp post which I don't like magnificent looking building it's beautiful to look at shall I pause this and have a quick wander over the road and we'll see the front of it there we are crossing the road that's the old one which was originally the Quaker Friends meeting house and the original Gurdwara temple and once we get round this here bend here I believe yes it's a chain link fence up here She'll get us round. She'll get us round and then we shall see the Barking Gurdwara Temple. And the very end bit of this video will be Elizabeth Fry on the five pound note. Look, it's magnificent. It's beautiful to look at. lovely isn't it? It nearly fell over then. Look and they've even got carvings and stuff on the walls here too which I like. I do like a building that's got character to it and this has got lots of character. Some people don't like this being here and I can understand your views in some way, so I really can. But if you've anything, what might nowadays be deemed as the racial nature, please don't say it. Not because I'm silencing you or cancelling you, but it could lose me my page. So, whatever faults may be. Let them rest. I'm just getting some pictures because that is really lovely. It's amazing. And this was all carved in India and sent over. Stunning look, the detail, 
That must have taken a very, very long time to carve. Can you imagine how long that must have taken? Anyways, right. And that's the old one. And that's what I like as well. You get old against new. The Quaker Friends Meeting House, which is, and it is, this part of it is not disused. It is still part, it is still used now. So that's good. There we are. Very nice. Yeah, that was lovely. What a stunning building. It's really beautiful. Look, it must have taken. Oh, thank you. I may do. Yeah, thanks very much. I'll take some photos. Oh, lovely. Oh, thank you. Bless you. I may do. Yeah, I'll. I do. Yeah, I can come. That gentleman just said I can come anytime, pop in, have a meal, as long as I put a skull on my head, which is the cap, and uh, he said photo taking would be fine as well, so I'll do that when I'm a bit better dressed, because I'm in my tracky bottoms and trainers at the moment. People at Barking St Margaret's know me and take me as I am, but with new surroundings and stuff, I would like to put make a good impression. What a lovely man. Really nice. Yeah. There we are. Let's get across the road. The green dude is on, so... Oh, I like the... Uh, I had to laugh in London. The unisex green... Not cooked a green man anymore. It's a unisex road crossing symbol. Because apparently people might find a green man offensive. So I, in all my years as a Londoner, never heard such ridiculousness. It's got silly now though, hasn't it? has got silly. There we are. This is back for what we came for. Just a little smidge over my time. Uh, uh, gonna pause you. There we are. And bearing in mind that Mrs. Elizabeth Fry was our port of call for the end of this one. I wanted to end with Elizabeth Fry. So I hope you all found this one interesting guys and girls. Thank you for watching, and the next part will just be a little very short clip of Elizabeth Fry and the five pound notes for anyone who doesn't remember or the young, young ones that haven't seen it. So, thanks for watching.